Hey, everybody. I hope you're having a great day, evening, or afternoon, depending on where you are. My name is David, and I'm here from Meta to talk to you about how business messaging can really help to transform your business, as well as give you some tips to do so, whether you're using Instagram, Messenger, or WhatsApp. I'll talk a little bit about how businesses and people are really shifting in the way they communicate, and expectations are changing as a result as well. So it's really important as you think about your communication with your customers on these types of channels, you have a plan and a strategy for how to best do it, whether you're driving sales, providing support, or doing a little bit of both. Providing a good customer experience is really the benchmark of what we should be doing. And again, a customer experience doesn't only mean that's post-purchase. That's from the very first interaction you've had with the customer all the way to the last. And a lot of times what it really comes down to is setting the expectation with your customers. When a business has the right channels and the channels that people want to speak to them with, that really is how you start to drive success from the very first moment. It doesn't matter whether they're making a purchase or coming with a complaint, or maybe they just want to say thanks for an awesome product. You want to make sure that you can be where they are, when they want it, and that they're going to get a response. And Really, this has continued to evolve over time. Businesses understand the value of communication, and they're always adapting, right? Years ago, there wasn't email support or web chat support. We used to call businesses, and that was the only way to get in touch with them. And as businesses continue to meet their customers where they are, they also need to evolve how they do that and what it means to meet a customer where they are. What's interesting is that actually today, the average business relies on about six to seven different channels just to communicate and keep up with their customers. That's a lot of work that all of you watching today have to think about. And so I want to help make it easier to talk about how messaging specifically can actually solve for almost every use case for you. On the other side of the coin, of course, is the customer themselves. And most people, they'll really highlight what a business is lacking, right? And when Twilio actually ran a survey across the U.S., the U.K., and Australia, they actually saw that while 7 in 10 businesses think they're doing a good job, only 2 out of 10 customers agree. What that means is there's obviously a disconnect here, and we need to think about how we have these discussions, where we have these discussions, and ultimately, what are the tools that you should be using, like Yamo CRM, and the things that we offer through our APIs in order to make those experiences seamless, fast, and ultimately get a good outcome for both you and your customers. And it's really important to recognize that communication doesn't equal connection. You have to build that connection. Just offering the channel is not enough. And I think most of us, we know that, right? When we think about the experiences that we have as a customer, when I'm on the other side, and I need to make an update to a product that I ordered, or I need to change a booking, or something happened on the way and I really need help, I've been on the other side, right, as we all have. And when we look at traditional experiences and the ways we can communicate today, phone, email, on website chat, they all have their kind of pros and cons, right? Whether it's long hold times, waiting for a response, Maybe sometimes you just want to hear somebody's voice and that's really important to you. And so we've all been there and we all think about, all right, what is the fastest way to get my problem solved? Or what is the fastest way to order the product that I want? And so I think that, again, business messaging and these types of services can really reshape the way you and your customers have those interactions. What I think is really important is that we all want a communication with the business today. We all expect, I should say, the communication we have with the business to be the same as what we have when we speak to friends and family. When I message my mom on WhatsApp or Messenger, if she gets back to me in like two days, I need to check in that she's all right. I'm not just worried about, okay, is she getting my message or seeing it, right? I wanna know what's happening. Or when I share a funny joke with my friends and they don't answer for like five hours, I get a little worried that maybe I missed the mark. And so I think that it's important that we understand that today your customers have that same expectation of you as a business. It's not just about, hey, how can I send you a message and I'm going to message you there and then I'm just going to sit and wait. I want that fast response. I want to know that you saw the message, 
that you have solutions for me to help answer that. And it's really, really important that we think about that when we lay out the plan and the vision for the experiences we create on a business messaging channel. The other thing to realize is that, again, it's not just for care. People also want to shop when they can message a business as well. They want to be able to ask questions and do pre-sale type work and activity with that business. It's really, really important. If I have a quick question and I'm not at a store where I can walk up to an agent and say, hey, I wondered if you have this in my size. Do you have another type or color in the back maybe? I want to be able to do that in a business message the same way, right? We all order things online now. And so I would expect that a business who is driving sales is going to be able to answer my questions, not just after the fact, but also before. Now, I don't think any of these things are going to be big surprises to all of you on the call, but as we know, messaging improves those communications. It's familiar, it's convenient, and it inspires trust. When I message a business or when a consumer messages a business and that business answers them, understands their needs, and gets a quick resolution, I feel stronger about my relationship with that business. I talk about it with my friends and family. I want to do it again. I want other businesses to do the same thing. And so I think that it's really important that we always put ourselves in that position, right? Like I said, when I message my friends, if they don't answer in a certain amount of time, I start wondering what's going on. On the other side, the loyalty component is really important. We've seen this across the board on all of our services. When a business just posts a story and the people respond, and your agents then actually answer, or you have automation set to answer the heart that they sent you about a new product launch, you're starting that relationship. You're building loyalty that extends into the order, the pre-order, and the post-purchase, right? That is how you have to think about these things. There's a connection all the way from the beginning to the very, very end, and the end hopefully comes back in a loop. And that's really important, and it's a bit new and different for all of us to think about the relationship we have with customers in this way. So now I'm going to talk about our three primary channels. As you know, Meta is home to three of the largest messaging apps in the world, Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Each one of them is different and unique, both in how customers use it and how people interact on the surfaces and what their expectations are, as well as what the APIs provide and the way we help businesses have those conversations back with their customers. Messenger makes business personal and convenient. The API is open to everybody so that you can build the experience connected to your Facebook page using a partner like MLCRM. On the other side, you have Instagram. And Instagram is a great way to connect with people and brands to inspire, to be visually exciting and think about how you can get your customers really amped up about the products that you have and message you and want to go ahead and purchase them. And then, of course, WhatsApp is trying to help enable any person, regardless of where they are, to communicate and transact with any business. And they've built their API to really help you do that. And I'll talk a little bit about where you should think and play with each one. And of course, depending on the market that you're focused on, one of them may have more importance to you at the moment. But I still think it's important to also think about what the future holds and what customers will continue to do across all of these channels. Now, before we dive into anything, I think that it's really, really important to think about your experience in four steps. You want to plan what you're going to do and what you're trying to solve. You, of course, want to create the experience. Then you want to connect that experience to the right people. And I'll talk a little bit about that as it relates to each one of these platforms. And then, of course, you want to optimize. The thing that I tell partners when I meet them is try to solve one thing first. Don't dive in and say, I'm going to put my whole product catalog and we're going to make everything available from day one and it's going to be amazing. Think about that one pain point that you want to solve for your customers. Do you have a new product that maybe you want to educate them about? Or maybe you realize that customers usually reach out to you because they're having an issue with shipping and you want to get that out of the way fast so you can spend more time with the customers that have deeper or different questions. Think about that one thing, and I'm sure you can all do it. And once you've solved that, then of course you can continue to expand and the APIs we offer can give you the full breadth of experiences that you would need to solve any issue. Again, whether it's a customer who's just starting their journey or they're at the end. But I think it's really important to think small at first 
to get yourself ready and able to answer your customers and have that discussion and create that loyalty from the very, very first moment you start that discussion. When it comes to Messenger, I think that a lot of people, first of all, think about the Facebook page. They think of this as the entry point. And I think it's really important to recognize that you can use other entry points, such as private replies. So when somebody comments on your page, you can send them a message. You can think about email links using what we call m.me links to actually direct customers into a conversation with your experience. You can even put Messenger on your website through your chat plugin, which I'll talk about in a minute. But just to give you some ideas, we have the ability through m.me links, for instance, to include referral parameters. And what that means is you don't have to start somebody at the very top of the conversation. So if you think about an email that you've sent touting a new product, you can include an m.me link in there. And it has a parameter, of course, that understands that this specific email was about a product. So when a customer clicks that button and starts the conversation with you, they're not coming from the very beginning. They don't need the welcome, it's nice to meet you. You can dive right into, hey, I understand you're really excited about this new shirt. How can we help you today? Or already offer them a list and ordering options, depending, again, on the experience that you're trying to build. But it's small things like this that, again, help you take a great experience and make it even better. Now, what about the chat plugin? The chat plugin enables you to put Messenger on your website. So that experience that you've created now lives on the site itself. itself. And what's great about that is that it can be both synchronous and asynchronous. Once a customer has come to your web page and if they've logged in via Messenger to start that conversation, that conversation will go with them through the app wherever they are. So they're no longer held to sitting at their computer and waiting for you to answer. They can get up and go about their day and continue that conversation. It, of course, also works on mobile web, so it doesn't matter where the conversation begins. And you can, again, put it on certain pages of your site. If you start on the care page versus a product page, that experience can be different. And again, it steps your customer ahead. It helps them figure out, okay, you know what? This brand actually understands what I'm doing. They're not sort of sending me back or resetting me the way that you would typically think about those experiences where it's like, hey, welcome to my page. Well, I was already on your page and I was already talking to you. So why not help the customer get a step ahead? And it's small tweaks like that, like I said, that if you think about it, it can give you a real advantage in getting a customer to close, especially if you think about a new product or something that they're about to order. Why make them go through the steps all over again? As for the chat plugin, we recently announced some new customizations as well, so that you're able to actually tweak and play with the look and feel even further to have it really fit your website experience. And we think that's really important, and we got a lot of feedback on this, so thank you for that, because I think that ultimately what we believe is that this combination of sync and async really makes a big difference when you have discussions with your customers. So think about the chat plugin, think about m.me links. These are great tools when you're trying to drive sales with customers that I think people don't fully take advantage of yet today. As we look at Instagram, it's a very similar funnel in terms of the different ways you can message a business, right? Profile posts, a shop, private messages, which I talked about. But we have other things like stories, which are incredibly popular. And as I mentioned earlier, we've seen great results with brands that reply to stories, even if it's small responses, right? Just having somebody like a story that you posted and then messaging them can create that moment of delight, which changes the way they think about and look at your business. It also helps them understand that, you know what? This is a channel that the brand is paying attention to. If I message them here, they answer me. And what we've seen as brands have started to use this API more and more is that when they start answering, people take notice. They get more messages. They create more opportunities to sell products and drive interest in their brand because those things, it's like a snowball rolling down a hill. Others notice, hey, I saw someone else posted a comment and the brand replied, I'm going to post a comment this way too. I'm going to send them a message as well. And so it really makes a difference to use the API and to be responsive across all the different areas of the funnel. And again, when you think about pre-purchase, there's a lot that you can do to set the customer up for their success in getting what they want quickly. We have icebreakers, which enable you to set 
mini FAQs so that when I come in, again, I already know that I want to know about a certain sized product or I want to know if something's shipping somewhere. I just tap a button and there you go. We have product templates, right? Again, Instagram, it's a visual medium. We want to make sure that it feels that way when you have the discussion too. So we have the product templates and then, of course, an ability to change from a manual conversation into an automated conversation or vice versa via the handover protocol. So you can think about it that if a customer gets stuck or they need extra help, you can always pass them on to a human agent to have that discussion and help them with whatever it is that they might have. I've seen it in the reverse, by the way. What you may have is advisors. Let's say you have a fashion advisor. So you actually start with a more manual experience, but once the customer gets to a certain point and they want to order, well, then you can pass that on to the automation, right? So you can think about it from both sides, depending on the experience that you're trying to build. Last but not least, I think it's important to think about private replies. I'm sure almost all of you are already doing this now that it's available, but we've added private replies for Instagram Live as well. What that means is that if you hold live shopping experiences on Instagram, you can now use private replies and comments in order to answer people that may be watching the experience when it's happening. And we've seen this really start to take off in some markets where I'm having a sale or I'm running something and I run a live experience. And while it's live, I have my agents or automation at the ready so that when people type a question or they want to order a product, I'm there in the moment to help do it. And we're really excited about this feature, and I'm excited to see how all of you watching today are going to start thinking about it, right? It doesn't have to be super overly produced. You can run it from your home or your shop, but it gives your customers, again, an experience and a time to watch and connect with you and then realize that I'm not just watching. It's not a passive activity. I can take part in the conversation. And that is the really, really important part of connecting the messaging experience to the other pieces of your overall strategy and planning. Now I'm gonna to move to WhatsApp. As we think about WhatsApp, again, most people first think about the phone number, but ultimately like the other channels, we offer tools that you can use to encourage customers to start the conversation with you. It can be as simple as a QR code that links right into the chat, you can put links on your pages, like your customer care page or in-app links. Those can be used in all kinds of surfaces. We can add links in Facebook ads or stories, as well as IVR deflection, which depending on the size and scale of your company might be really useful. IVR deflection means that when a person is waiting on the phone for you, you might actually be able to say, listen, we don't have agents available on the phone now, but we might be able to solve your problems via chat and then you direct them into the chat instead. And we've seen all of these entry points really, really work well, depending on the circumstance that you have, because the key is, again, how do we get that customer into the right place quickly and efficiently? Something we launched pretty recently on the WhatsApp side that I think is really, really useful is lists. Instead of sending these sort of press one, press two, right, really emulating the old school phone experience, we now have what we call list messages, which means you can aggregate those things into a list like you see on the screen, and then from there, tap what you want and continue the conversation. Of course, you use that in conjunction with our buttons and replies so that you can create an automated experience that allows a customer to go in, look for something, get an answer quickly. We also have what we call product lists. So on the e-com side, you can create lists of products. And what that means is, again, if you want to have a list of all your shirts because somebody came in, you can have that list pop up, the customer can tap it, and then they can move forward. Of course, that's connected to the commerce APIs and other APIs we have on that side of the house. So it all fits together really, really neatly for your business as well as for your customers. Short example of this that you can see is lead generation for uh, let's say a car company, right? So I'm going in, I want to look at a specific model or style of car, and there I have it as a list. Further than that, you can actually use the list for appointment booking. So now I've shown the times and I've helped the customer go from having to wait on the phone and calling the dealership or asking all of these questions to saying, hey, in about four or five taps, I've now understood about the specific vehicle and I've made an appointment to go give it a test drive. So it's small tweaks, ways you can put these things together that really help make a better experience. 
So with that, I think that it's really important to remember that good communication is critical to the customer experience at all parts of the experience. Whether it's a new person asking a question because they saw your IG live, or it's a repeat customer who wants to say, this is awesome, I really appreciate everything that you've been doing for me. I believe that it's super important to remember that messaging apps, they make it simple to deliver customer conversations that build stronger customer connections at all parts of the funnel. And if you really think about it and you nail that extra little thing that you wanted to do via these types of tools, you can completely transform the experiences that people have with your business. And we all know that anybody that has a good experience with your business then can become a cheerleader, a supporter, and ultimately someone that just loves working and doing business with you and wants to do it again and again. Thank you so much for joining today. Really excited to be here and looking forward to seeing what all of you are going to do next across all of these surfaces.